Hello, my name is Sam Kwok. I'm one of the Kwok brothers, real estate investor, entrepreneur, and the author of the book, Fire Your Boss. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to pay off your 30-year mortgage in less than five to seven years without making more money or cutting back on your expenses. Now, you may wanna stick around to the end of this video because I'm gonna offer a free gift only for those who make it all the way to the end. Uh, you guys will get that free gift at the end of the video. Uh, this video, I'm gonna explain to you a couple things. Um, the first thing I'm gonna explain to you is why your mortgage, your 30 year mortgage absolutely sucks. Uh, why the other strategies, you know, paying extra into the mortgage uh, isn't necessarily the best strategy to go about it. Uh, I'm gonna introduce you to a strategy called the debt acceleration strategy. So the goal of the strategy, uh, I'm gonna write down right here on the board, debt free acceleration strategy. Uh, this strategy has many names. It's got uh, names of mortgage acceleration, velocity banking, debt acceleration, pill method. Uh, there's so many different names. Uh, a lot of people use velocity banking. I like to use a debt-free acceleration because we want to accelerate you towards uh, becoming debt-free. So the goal of this is to save you up to 67% of interest that you owe to the bank and saving you up to 67% of the time that you may spend on paying off your 30 year mortgage, which by the way, this actually works on your student loans, your car loan, credit cards, any other debt that's amortized, uh, not just mortgage, it works on pretty much any other debt. Um, so that's the goal that we're gonna, uh, we're gonna accomplish for this video. We're gonna take your mortgage, 30 year mortgage, and pay it off in third of the time and 30 interest, and that is the goal. Now. One of the things that we have to talk about is why do we need to use this strategy? What, like, what makes mortgage terrible, right? Um, like, what's what's wrong with your current mortgage that we want to switch to a whole different strategy or get introduced to a different strategy? So, first thing is that um, with your mortgage, I know your mortgage rate, interest rate, may sound innocent at three percent, four percent, five percent, but let's say you have a mortgage of a balance of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's our principal balance, okay? And let's say uh, you have a interest rate of 5% at 30 year amortization. Okay, I'm gonna uh, abbreviate that. Um, do, you, do you actually understand how much you're gonna end up paying in terms of interest? Like a lot of people look at that 5% I'm like, oh, it's just 5%, innocent, it's not gonna cause me any harm. But if you fully amortize this out on a 30 year amortization, you're gonna actually end up paying close to nearly almost double the amount. So this is just gonna be your interest and that's your principal. So in total, you may end up, and you can do this calculation on a amortization calculator. Uh, this, there's no trick, there's no gimmick. But if you get a $250,000 loan on, your, uh, on a mortgage, 5% interest, 30 year amortized, you're gonna, clo you're gonna pay close to $250,000 in interest alone, which gives you, which leaves you about total of $500,000 that you're gonna pay to the banks. So you essentially bought a bank another house on top of paying for yours, right? Which is terrible. So that 5% interest, guys, it's, it's being compounded, right? It's not just 5% of that $250,000, it's gonna be a compounded interest and you're gonna end up paying close to $250,000 of interest. Now, another reason why I don't like the mortgage, especially the 30-year mortgage, uh, is, is this. I'm gonna draw out a chart for you. This is called the amortization schedule chart. And in this chart, this right here represents uh, the time. So this is time, okay? And our goal obviously is to get to the 30 year mark. And I know a lot of you guys are saying, well, that's 30 years is a long time. Uh, I don't have 30 years, I'm gonna be, be I'm gonna be dead by, uh, by the time that I pay off my mortgage. Well, our goal again is, again, is to pay off our mortgage within five to seven years so that you can accelerate towards retirement. Maybe you wanna, you wanna take that extra cash flow and invest in real estate. I don't know what your goal is, but uh, our goal in general is to pay off your 30 year mortgage. Uh, this represents the amount, your monthly mortgage payment. Okay, I'm actually raised the dollar sign. So this is your, represents your mortgage payment every month. Okay, let's say your mortgage payment is around $1,500 a month. Okay, I'm just gonna throw a, uh, an arbitrage number. I know, uh, ar ar arbitrary number, not arbitrage. Arbitrary number, I know some of you guys have uh, more in terms of your monthly payments, some of you guys may have less. I'm just gonna throw a number out there for the sake of illustration. So this line right here, actually it looks different. I'm gonna make this nice and clean and organized for you guys. So $1,500 a month, uh, roughly this line and this line, 
okay? Uh, this downward curve you guys are seeing here, that represents the amount of interest that you're gonna pay in the span of 30 years. The, the curve line that goes upward represents the principal payment. Now you notice here that this portion right here, out of your entire mortgage payment, approximately let's say $1,200 a month in the beginning of your mortgage life cycle, uh, vast majority of your monthly payment is going towards your interest first. So essentially, you're paying the banks their fee to borrow the money up front, they're getting paid first, and then towards the end of your mortgage, towards the 30-year uh, mark, this is where you get to go and start paying off your, your actual principal balance, which is what we want, right? The, the faster we pay off our principal, the faster we can get to building our equity and wealth and becoming debt-free. Now, the problem with this is that um, it's okay that you know if you have patience, right? If you can wait 30 years, you can ride this out completely fine. But in a real life scenario, there's two things that happen during the 30 year uh, mortgage that pretty much sort of puts you in a perpetual debt. The first thing is what happens, uh, this part right here, let's say, okay, this is your kind of a halfway mark. So let's say this is your 10 year mark. Um, I know it's not quite half, but let's just, my drawing is terrible. So let's say this is your 10 year mark and you're starting to gain more principal, right? As you as you go towards the 30 year mark, you're getting more principal and you're paying less interest. Now there's two things that happen. The first thing that happens is, is actually a bit more common. Uh, you get to this point, your banker may call you, right? Ring, ring, ring. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Banker, congratulations, you made it to the 10-year mark. You, you're doing really great, not a single late payment. Uh, you're, you're doing phenomenal, you're a great borrower. And for that reason, we wanna give you a refinance rate instead of a 5% interest rate. Come on down to our bank in our office and we'll give you a, uh, we'll a 4.75 interest. And we'll give you a discount of 0.25% interest come on down in so you can save money on interest. Or they may convince you and say, hey, let's go and bring down that $1,500 a month payment, let's refinance and bring you down to maybe uh, $1,350 a month, saving you an extra $150. Now, here's the truth, guys, and, I, and, and there's a reason why they, they, the banks want you to refinance. The banks never, ever want you to make it to this part here because you, why? Now they're making less interest and they're not making enough money from you. So what they, wanted, what they want you to do is get to this part right here, when you start to make more money on the principal, when you start to accumulate more principal, they want you to come refinance in the name of saving you extra $150 a month or more or less, uh, or they may convince you say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Barr, uh, let's go and bring your rate down to 4.75. Now the problem is if you do refinance, you start all over back to square one to year zero, you have that 30 year time clock that resets and you're gonna have to pay all this interest back again to the none of them the banks. Okay, so the banks want you to stay in this zone right here because they can continue to recycle you back and forth, back and forth, making more money out of you having a large balance and they're taking interest from you. Well, it's just what banks do, right? They, 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 need to be stay, uh, they need to stay profitable. Now, you might say, well, Sam, I'm, I'm disciplined enough to not do this refinance. I know the refinance will reset me. Well, another thing that happens quite often, uh, at least here in the United States, I know some of you guys are watching from Canada, Australia, England, but what happens here in the United States is that um, there's a new statistics that uh, Americans have new job every three to five years, uh, or they may get fired from their job or whatever. So. There might be a, a situation where you uh, who get a new job, you may need to get a new job, and you need to move and sell your house. Now, what happens if you sell your house and you buy a new one with a new mortgage? Do you get to continue progress from here, right? So you've built up all this equity uh, and you paid off, uh, you've done paying, paying off most of the interest. Do you get to continue paying off the, the, the remaining? No, right? So when you go and get a new mortgage, you have to, again, same thing, you start from square zero, from zero years, and you get to 30 years, um, and it resets your clock. So you're sort of stuck, aren't you, right? You either have to refinance to get a lower rate or to save that extra money on that monthly payment, or if you have to move for a new job, a career change, maybe your kids retire, then you may have to downsize, whatever that may be, you don't get to continue your progress, you don't get to continue building that principal or equity, you have to start all over. So um, the 30-year the mortgage, the odds are stacked against you guys, and this is one of the biggest reasons why I'm not a big fan of the mortgage. A, because if you, let's say you do have a 5% interest rate or even 4% interest rate, 
you're gonna end up paying close to double the amount uh, of your your original principal amount, and you have this disadvantage of having to refinance either because you have to move or you get persuaded by your banker telling you that you're gonna save money. Okay, not a good, not a good way to pay off, and I know most of you guys don't wanna wait 30 years to pay off your, your loan, and I, I can't either. But luckily, there's a, better, uh, there's a better strategy and there's a whole new opportunity where you guys can take advantage of this strategy called the debt-free acceleration. And you guys are gonna be able to pay off your mortgage within one third of the time and one third of the interest without having to make more money. So I'm gonna introduce you to a new instrument that we're gonna use, a new opportunity. Uh, instead of using a mortgage, we're gonna use something called a home equity line of credit, okay? Home equity lines of credit. Now. Uh, home equity line of credit, it's often abbreviated and it's called HELOC, okay? It's not HELOC, okay, it's HELOC. Um, we're gonna use a home equity line of credit to pay off your mortgage. Now, I know there's a lot of objections that I get. You might be watching this video and saying, well, why in the world would we ever wanna take a higher interest rate, variable rate, uh, home equity line of credit and pay off our lower rate mortgage? I'm gonna get to that in just a sec, okay? But I wanna give you a distinction between a mortgage versus your home equity line of credit. Uh, the first thing, that we wanna highlight with the mortgage, uh, it's closed ended. And what that basically means is that once you make your monthly payment to your bank, you can't get that money back. Unless you, again, refinance, which we don't want, we're not, we don't condone any refinancing here. But on a home equity line of credit, um, it's open ended. Okay, I just, like the, I just like the word open, right? Just makes you feel a little more ease. Uh, open ended means that you can pay uh, into the home equity line of credit and then reuse the, the principal portion of the home equity line of credit and then pay it back, reuse and pay it back. It's almost like a credit card. In fact, your credit card is a type of a line of credit. So the first thing that we need to remember is that mortgage is closed ended and home equity line of credit is open ended. Cool, uh, with the mortgage, it could be fixed rate or it could be variable, right? This is why we have this stuff called ARM. Uh, with the home equity line of credit, contrary to the myth and the, the common belief, home equity, uh, home equity line of credit can also be fixed and variable as well. Uh, more often, um, what's more common is the variable, but there are banks that offer fixed rate HELOCs. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about that today because we can go in a whole different rabbit hole. But just remember these two things. Uh, when you compare home equity line of credit and a mortgage, there's a lot of different differences. Um, that I can list out today. But again, we don't have a whole lot of time to go into the details. I'll give you more of the overview of this strategy. Again, uh, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a special gift that's gonna help you understand the strategy even more. Um, to give you a visual illustration, let's say this is your checking account, okay? And you got your HELOC here. With the HELOC, you, could, you can go ahead and pay cash into the home equity line of credit, do a principal payment against the home, home equity line of credit, and you can get that money back out uh, to use for other purposes. With a mortgage, because it's closed ended, you can only pay the mortgage and not get the money back out unless you go through the refinance process, which we now know that we don't wanna refinance because we don't wanna reset our clock and pay all that interest all over again. So keep that in mind, guys, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a star in this thing called the open-ended feature, the ability to be, uh, to be able to pay back and reuse the HELOC. That's probably gonna be, be the most important part of this, or the feature of this strategy. The next thing that's really important to highlight with the HELOC is that it uses uh, the concept of uh, average daily interest, some people call it simple interest, uh, but the average daily interest is another big, big reason why this strategy works the way it does. So, I don't like math. I know some of you guys don't either, um, but this is the only time you're gonna see math, I promise. So, the way that uh, the interest is calculated on home equity line of credit is it uses average daily balance, okay? And average daily balance is the balance of uh, whatever debt you have for that specific day. So let's say we have $100,000 in our home equity line of credit today. We're gonna have uh, a set interest for today's balance and tomorrow, let's say we have a completely different balance on our home equity line of credit. Uh, it's gonna be, tomorrow we'll have, we'll have a different amount of interest depending on whether the average daily balance went up or the average daily balance went down, okay? In fact, uh, if, I'm, if I'm describing a specific day, I'm just gonna use daily balance. Average daily balance describes um, what the daily balance was as a whole in, in a month. So we're gonna go in and actually erase this and just simply call it daily balance. 
And how uh, the interest is calculated is it takes the daily balance divided by 365 days, because that's how many days we have in a year, okay, times the interest rate of your line of credit equals average daily interest. Okay, so that's the interest that we're getting charged on that specific day. So if today we have $100 in, that, in the line of credit, divided by 365 times, let's say 5% interest, whatever that number might be is going to be the interest that we get charged today. Tomorrow we may have $125, okay? Obviously the interest is gonna go up a little bit because our daily balance went up. So two things to remember about the HELOC, and before we get to the, I'm gonna show you a sort of, a, sort of a, a real life concept as to how this strategy is gonna work and why the strategy works. The first thing to remember is that the HELOC is open-ended, okay? Number two is um, the HELOC, the interest rate is calculated based on average daily balance. If you understand those two things, you're well on your way to understanding why this strategy works um, and how you can apply the strategy to pay off your mortgage within five to seven years. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna ask you guys a question. I think this is gonna sort of prepare, prepare your mindset for how this strategy works. So what if you can go ahead and um, supposedly, okay, pay off, take all of your income and your savings and your uh, whatever money you have in your checking account, throw every single dollar of it into the line of credit, a home equity line of credit, bringing down the average daily balance low so that you're subject to lower interest while still giving you the access to that same money, the income and the savings for future use. Some of you guys are like, wait, hold on. So you mean to tell me that I can go and take all my income and savings, lower down the average daily balance on my home equity line of credit, but I can still access that money in the future? Yeah, so um, let me give you a, a version of the strategy. I'm actually gonna show you two separate versions. The first version involves in uh, having an income source, okay? And traditionally, what you guys have been doing is you've been taking all of your income and putting it in a checking account, or you've been putting it on a savings account, okay? And savings account today don't really earn you much money, right? It's like 2%, 3% at, be at best. Um, so a lot of you guys have a mortgage. And let's say you have a mortgage of um, $200,000 a balance, okay? I know some of you guys have more, some of you guys have less. Stick with me here, this is just an illustration. So what this strategy involves as a uh, more of a 30,000 feet overview is you're gonna get a HELOC Okay, as a second position of let's say we have a limit of $25,000 limit. Remember, home equity line of credit works similar to your credit card. You don't get that $25,000 up front, you get a limit. So you can use up to $25,000, pay it off, use it again and pay it off. So what we're gonna do from here is that once you have your HELOC, your mortgage of $200,000, let's say, you got your checking account, your income coming in, uh, one of the big things we're gonna do, the first move that we're gonna make, I'm gonna use red for this one, is take your $25,000, let's say we're just gonna use $20,000 out of the $25,000, and we're gonna do a principal payment against that mortgage. Now, the thing here is that we didn't incur more debt, guys, we, we just transfer one set of debt, a portion of one debt over to another. So obviously it's no longer $200,000, we're down to $175,000 in terms of your mortgage balance, principal balance. Uh, I'm sorry, it should be 180 because we only used 20,000 of it, right? And we have $20,000 of balance incurred in the HELOC. So $180,000 plus $20,000, still $200,000, we, we don't have more debt, It's we're still at the same uh, same amount of debt. Now what you're doing here is that when you do your $20,000 principal balance uh, payment on the mortgage, you brought the amount of um, the principal balance down from mortgage, which now co consequently, you're gonna pay less interest on your mortgage. By doing this, this should also save you uh, multiple months. Uh, depends on what the interest rate you have on the mortgage. It should save you anywhere between Gosh, anywhere it could be, it could be anywhere between two to three years that you save just by doing that twenty thousand dollar chunk. Does that make sense? So now we have twenty thousand dollars debt here, don't we? So what we're doing here is that we take our income, uh, we go instead of from checking account, we go straight into the HELOC. All of your money, let's say you you make about five thousand dollars a month, take all of your money, put in your home equity line of credit and treat your home equity line of credit as if it's your new savings slash checking account. 
Uh, let's say you have some extra money sitting in your savings, same thing, put it in your HELOC. Remember, we can reuse that money. We can go and pull money out of the home equity line of credit pretty much whenever we want. So the next objection I get from people is, well, Sam, if we take all of our income and put it in the home equity line of credit, how in the world are we gonna pay for our bills? How are we gonna pay for diapers, groceries, uh, gas, uh, go buy movie tickets? How are, we, how are we gonna spend the money, right? If we throw all the money in there, we can't get it back. Well, remember guys, we, we can get the money back from the HELOC. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, take money out of the HELOC for gas, uh, groceries, right? Uh, bills, diapers, you name it. All at the same time, you still do need to make uh, your monthly mortgage payment because obviously if you don't, you're gonna get into a foreclosure and I don't want you to do that. So uh, make sure you continue to make monthly payments to your mortgage to make sure you uh, stay current on that. So what this does is uh, two things. Number one, it, it brings down your average daily balance by the amount of your income. And number two, still gives you the access to that $5,000 of income for your expenses. So while the balance is down, let's say uh, we take that $5,000, put it against that $20,000 balance, we're gonna be down to $15,000 balance. And remember how we talked about the average daily balance? The lower the balance we have, okay, we're gonna be subject to a lower interest amount for that specific day. Now, you're gonna have expenses, but chances are you don't have all of your expenses incurred all at the same time the, right ne the, the next day. So next day, chances are, once you make that $5,000 deposit into your home equity line of credit, chances are it's gonna stay relatively at the same, same amount of uh, balance, right? Unless you go spend $100 or $200 uh, at groceries. So let's say you do go and spend, uh, I'm gonna put it, put this in a chart format so it's a little bit more easier to, to see mathematically. Um, so let me give you a, a week of example, a seven day example. So we got day one here of $20,000 balance and we, we bring it down by $5,000 we have an income, let me just label this. There we go, income of $5,000. Okay, you guys see that? So um, it brings down the balance, daily balance. I'm gonna just use the word, uh, write the uh, letter B in there and it's gonna represent balance. Our balance is gonna be $15,000, okay? The next day, let's say we uh, spent uh, $100 for groceries, okay, or gas, or whatever you guys might be using. So our new daily balance is gonna be 15,000 and 100, okay, that's day two. Day three, I might not, actually, I might not even have room for all seven days, so I'm just gonna use three days, uh, but I think you guys will get it. Um, day three, we're gonna spend 500 bucks uh, on a car payment or whatever. That should bring our balance up again to 15,600. Now, if I do the math on the, the interest side of things, let's say our interest is 5%, or let's make it a little bit more realistic, 6% interest on this line of credit. I'm gonna actually grab my calculator and show you guys uh, the actual numbers and uh, on the interest, okay? So I brought my calculator out. So we got uh, $15,000 as our daily balance times, or I should divide this by 365, okay, times 0 0.06, which is our interest rate, okay. Our, um, our interest that we're gonna pay is $2.46. Okay, let me uh, actually use red to highlight the interest. $2.46. The next day we incurred a balance uh, increase of $100. So I'm gonna take 15,100 divided by 365 days times 0 .06, right? Our interest went up to $2.48. So you guys get the idea, right? Every day the interest uh, is, is, is changing. But what if we kept the balance at $20,000 day two, day three, day four, day five, day six? Right, we would continue to pay that $2, oh, I'm sorry, it should be higher than $2.46. You would actually be paying $20,000 divided by 365 uh, times 0 0.06. You would actually be paying $3.28 as long as you carry that balance of $20,000. But you can see why bringing that balance down to $15,000 using all of your income, your savings, we save that 
I mean, I'm gonna guess and say a dollar, about a dollar and a couple cents, right? Actually, it's it's less than that, less than a dollar. Um, so it's, it's it's saving. I know less than a dollar doesn't sound a lot, but if it adds up in multiple days and it compounds, you're gonna end up saving a lot of interest. Um, version two of the strategy. Now that you guys kind of get the idea of why the average daily balance is so important, uh, version two involves in taking your entire mortgage let's say a $200,000 balance using the same example, okay? And instead of getting another HELOC, what we're, what we're gonna do is, this is called the first position HELOC strategy. We replace the entire mortgage with a HELOC. So you're replacing your mortgage with the HELOC uh, and you're essentially the same thing from there. You take all of your income and your savings, throw it into the to HELOC, lower the average daily balance down, uh, all the while, you can spend that money out of your HELOC for expenses and so on. Cool? All right, so the strategy, um, that's pretty much just a strategy. I mean, we can go into the details of what to do with credit cards, uh, what to do with, if you have different, multiple different mortgages, we can go into all that. Um, unfortunately, we don't have all the time in the world, but what I'm gonna leave you with is the free gift. Um, what I'm gonna give you is a, a, an Excel sheet calculator where it's gonna show you guys uh, where you can punch in your own numbers. So you can put in your original balance, your current balance, your interest rate on your mortgage. Uh, you can put in your line of credit information as well as your income, your expenses, and it's gonna spit out uh, the result of how soon you can pay off your mortgage, how much money you're gonna save using our strategy, as well as a target deadline for the payoff period. So you can go and get this free ebook. I'm also gonna throw, I'm sorry, the check, the, the free Excel sheet. I'm also gonna even throw a free ebook in there for, for a further explanation on how this strategy works. Um, so that's chopmymortgage.com. So if you go to chopmymortgage.com, all you have to do is fill out your information and then we'll give you uh, a free Excel calculator to go and punch in your numbers, figure out why this strategy works, how this strategy works, and we're also even gonna give you an ebook. I'm also, after you get the free ebook uh, and the calculator, you guys are gonna be uh, asked to participate on an hour and a half training session where I'm gonna go deeper into the strategy. I know we spent the last couple few minutes going over the 30,000 feet overview. Uh, well, for the hour and 30 minute video, I'm gonna actually go into details. I'm gonna actually use the calculator, show you the math, show you the, um, the Excel sheet, and, and really show you why this strategy works, uh, what does it look like on a daily, uh, daily uh, timeline, uh, what does it look like on a monthly timeline, how much are we actually saving. We're gonna go into uh, the more details on how to, how to work this strategy in your current situation, whether you just have a mortgage, student loan, etc. So go to childmymortgage.com guys, go and download the free ebook as well as the Excel calculator. One thing that I do wanna note is that the Excel calculator only works on desktop, laptop, and tablets. Not, just, uh, not yet on the mobile phone, uh, we are working on that feature. Um, so the, the calculator is absolutely free. You're not gonna pay anything. Trust me, there's no gimmick in that. Uh, just go to chopmymortgage.com, get our free ebook, uh, attend our free hour and a half training where I'm gonna go into deeper uh, level as far as why this strategy works, how this strategy works. Um, and again, this is for um, debt acceleration strategy, also known as HELOC strategy, velocity banking, mortgage acceleration. There's different names to it. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next video, the hour and a half presentation, as well as having you download the calculator. I'll see you guys in the next step.